Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 69. And boy, what an interesting week. I've had a couple of friends have some disasters and Sherry got hurt. And so I want to talk a little bit about some of these things I saw and heard about and RV safety. So let's move on. Well, I could swear there was a full moon last night or something in the last day and a half because all kinds of stuff have been going on. Um, I'm going to try to talk about them all. I'll talk about what happened to me and Sherry uh, last night, actually. And then Sherry actually got hurt, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. And then a friend of mine uh, who does videos from uh, Three Tails RV, Aaron, they just about burned down their RV. And then last night, out of the blue last oh it must have been like four to five o'clock in the morning arizona got themselves a windstorm of all windstorms and some rain and caught all of us off guard because the uh, weather told us nothing about high winds and so there was a lot of people out, up at about four four thirty in the morning trying to save their chairs save their flags save their uh uh, furniture, save their RVs, save their awnings. Uh, there was a lot of awnings damaged yesterday, and uh, so yeah. Let me uh, kind of uh, kind of start over here a little bit and talk about what happened to me and Sherry. This was before the windstorm last night. So Sherry uh, noticed that a lot of times uh, your tanks or gray tanks, you can kind of get a back. Uh, smell from them a little bit especially the galley one because you put a lot of food products and stuff in it and it's good to rinse them out a lot so sherry got this brilliant idea to uh which you sh i mean you should be able to do and uh, um she uh thought well let's fill this tank to the top before i dump it so it gets a good rinse out and then she also put uh a liquid uh laundry soap on uh, that laundry soap uh dish soap in it to kind of help just uh, sanitize it more and see if we can get the smell down from the tank and uh, so she filled it up and she was running the water and running the water for a long time in fact a long long time and uh, finally went out and uh, flushed it and uh, we noticed you could kind of smell gray water smell not black water but gray water and uh, lo and behold we start finding out we see water coming out from underneath the RV which was the the panel underneath not actually spilled on the floor or anything so it looks like uh we uh i was like it would have been nice to know that we had like an overflow valve but or vent but that's not true so i'm guessing we probably have a crack on our intake into the gray tank that when you got the tank full then water started linking out of the top of the tank and then filled up the underbelly, and then that's where the water is coming out because it was coming out the edges of the underbelly. So it sounds like I'm going to have to open up that underbelly, get up there, and see if we can seal that pipe. Uh, it's probably got a crack in it from um, uh, transport, you know, transporting, and very uh, not that unusual of a problem. And I got on the internet when some forums and stuff, and yeah, sure and heck, uh, it's, uh, it happens a lot with. It doesn't matter what rig you got. It's just a lot of force bouncing up and down. And, and it could be one or two, your intake from the top of the tank, or it can be your exhaust, too, uh, where it's a breathing apparatus that allows the tank to breathe. And uh, either one of those could be cracked. And when we filled the tank and got to the top, it seeped out that crack or whatever it is up there and we'll find out and we'll do a video all about it so so that's started our late evening kind of rough and so uh you know after we found that out you know we were kind of monitoring the water that was draining out of the underbelly well you know of course this is going on during the cubs and uh indians uh world series last game last game <coughs> sorry and uh so we're trying to watch that and we have this crisis going on and uh, 
So we kind of like in between breaks and stuff like that. Uh, Sherry says, oh, I'm going to go out and take a look and see if it's getting any better or if it stopped leaking. And uh, so I thought I'd go out with her too. So we b both put on our kind of our little um, sandal type shoes and went outside with a flashlight. And going down the stairs, Sherry on the last step misstepped a little bit too far out and fell and twisted her ankle into the gravel. Luckily, she didn't hit like a... Uh, her head or anything like that, but uh, hurt her ankle pretty good and scuffed up her knees pretty good and and uh, convinced us we're definitely getting old. So the first thing I always want to remind people, and I don't care if you're young or old or older, it doesn't matter, to I think uh, Sherry was holding on to the door and going down, but really you need to always, always, always just no matter how big a hurry you're in and stuff grab your side handle and hold on as you go down the steps and take your time and especially if you're wearing like sandals or th uh, uh, flip flop type shoes um, you tend to misstep a lot with those on I know I do so this is just a big reminder for going up and out of your RV to stop for a moment Grab the little uh, handle off on the side that we all normally have that fold, folds in when we're traveling. To just grab that and get in the habit, always get in the habit of grabbing that as you're going down the stairs. Because you just it always catches you when you're off guard, when you're just not focused. And so if you can start that routine and constantly just uh, do that, even if uh, you know you're 100% uh focused on going up and down your stairs grab that handle and just get in the habit and always tell people as they're going in and out of the rv to please hold on to the handle and so sherry bit the big one and uh yeah she's sore today she went to work today and she's like saying it was pretty much more embarrassing than anything but you know when you get our age when we fall that we don't bounce back as fast as we used to and uh so uh Anyway, I don't know how to emphasize more about RV safety. And, and and in a fifth wheel, you also have your set of stairs typically going up to your bedrooms or sometimes people have living rooms in there. Uh, always a good idea to always be holding on there too. Uh, I don't think, I think part of the problem is they don't typically use your standard steps that you're used to. And so uh, like you would in a public building and stuff. So you misstep a lot it's easy to do and if you're not wearing good shoes uh, that's definitely asking for trouble so there's the first thing that happened so then my friend Aaron from Three Tails RV he's aiming me during my crisis he didn't realize he was doing that but turns out he was trying to burn down his RV and it turns out that they've got a residential type of uh, he's modified his RV where he's got a regular oven in it and uh uh, I believe, and he had one of his hoses was uh, too close to the burner uh, on his um, uh, RV or his stove, and it melted it enough where then gas was kind of leaking out, and he had quite the fire underneath his uh, uh, RV. Uh, well, underneath his, I'm sorry, uh, his stove. And he actually was filming at the time doing a cooking show for his RV. And so um, his video is very abrupt. And, of course, uh, all of us get a little upset and we uh, are reacting at the time. So it's kind of a – it's not the type of video that Aaron normally does. But you have to put yourself in your uh, their shoes. They're kind of panicking, making sure they don't have a fire, how to get it out. Wasn't prepared for it right away. And, uh, uh, and he showed the fix. And um, – so, yeah, uh, I'll put a link to that video in our description and uh, um, makes for interesting viewing. And probably if you have lessons learned is two things out of that is, is the mechanics of your oven and stuff um, check? You know, it's always good to check the undercover, see that your burners and uh, hoses are uh, in proper locations. And two is... Um, in a quick reaction, do you know where your fire extinguishers are or where some baking powder is or, or uh, anything like that to, in order to put a fire out really quick? And uh, the last thing you ever want to do to put a fire out in a kitchen is use water. You want to use powdered 
extinguishers or a powder that is used for cooking. Even flour would probably be efficient to put out a fire in a kitchen. So, um, you know, preferably you always have, and just because you have one fire extinguisher, I spend the extra money and get a couple of them, put them in different places in the RV. And I, I literally keep one loose in our kitchen. That's just like a counter item. And, uh, yeah, it's not pretty, but it's, um, there, um, we immediately know where to get our fire extinguisher. So, uh, um, uh, and I'm just as guilty. I'm not saying that this is something we do perfectly, but it sure makes you think of, uh, of, how something so simple could go wrong, uh, going down steps or just your oven. Uh, are you prepared for safety and emergencies? Just ask yourself that question. What if that happened to me? I mean, just right this minute, say, what happens if that happened to me right now? Would we be able to handle the situation? And uh, and uh, Aaron actually even burned his fingers pretty good, too. So anyway, not a good evening for him, except for the fact that we both got to watch the Cubs win their game on the World Series that night. So, But just to add on to that, I'll tell you more what happened around the RV park. So as I told you earlier, um, as we were having our disasters in the evening, and Aaron had his disaster in the evening, well, late at night, we're talking real late, it was like 3.30, 4 o'clock, at, um, we knew that the weather was changing here in Arizona a little bit to get some rain, but they did not even give anybody an indication that there'd be high winds. Well, we got high winds. We got real high winds. I don't know how high they got, but they were nasty. And it caught everybody off guard in this RV park. Um, there was there's definitely damaged uh, awnings. People are running around in their jammies last night trying to save their stuff. Um, people that have flags, I have a flag too, but my flag is... I don't know. It's not a real expensive flag, but it handles high winds really well. So I didn't worry about mine. The worst thing it do is it could break, and I'd have to get another one. But it's it was fine. But my neighbor has a uh, flag pole that he put up and kind of uh, uh, homemade a little bit. It fell down and actually fell across over on his motorcycle. Uh, and but I tell you, there was furniture everywhere and rugs everywhere and. Um, uh, a lot of people had uh, their awnings out with uh, side, side things that are uh, shields on them um, that are into the ground. So in normal circumstances, even a windy day, those are fine. But this kind of wind was, I have no idea what this, it was nasty. Cause, uh, what was funny about it is uh, Sherry and I both had our windows open. And it was blowing so hard, it was like a, a wind tunnel going across our faces because we had both windows open. And then it started raining, and I was actually getting splattered with rain, so I had to shut my window. I haven't had wind like that here before. And so, yeah, lots of damage, uh, lots of people still picking up the parts and pieces. And uh, so, boy, I tell you, there's another thing. Those darn awnings are really something you just can't relax on it's one of those things in arizona you never want to leave your awning out unless you really have it staked to the ground well um because you could go out to dinner and the wind could pick up and 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 light winds could really mess up a an awning if they're not tied down and so you just have to get in the hot um, before we back out sherry and i always look at the rv and tell ourselves ah, we better put that awning in the rest of the way we keep ours out maybe one to two feet, and it can handle high winds that way. But if we get any more than that, it's a parachute. And uh, um, but yeah, uh, even um, you know, for that peace of mind, just pull the thing in. Don't take a risk. Uh, those things are a real pain to fix and expensive. So yeah, wow, what a night. What a the last 24 hours, not for, you know, for me, for Aaron, this RV park, uh, I can't, I can't express enough of how much damage, or at least um, uh, so you know, so many people have uh, stuff out in the yard, or you know, because uh, in Arizona everybody's got their chairs out. Some people have tables and chairs, and. Uh, uh, they were caught off guard. Normally, if we knew there was a wind coming, we would have 
turn our chairs sideways or put our tables down upside down, uh, pull on and all of our awnings, uh, little tents that people have, they wouldn't have had those out or would have staked them down better. But this was a relentless wind that was nasty, just plain old nasty. So there you go. Lots of excitement in the old RV park. And uh, Sherry's, I uh, believe, doing fine. She's pretty sore. But I just talked to her. Uh, she's at work right now. And she says, uh, you know, she's sore and just more embarrassed about the whole thing. And it's only human. And um, I, I took a good fall about two years ago when I was up at uh, Anacortes on some rocks. And, uh, you know just wasn't paying attention and stepped in an area where I had kind of slippery rocks and back I go on my hip and back and then you know I'm not young and I am definitely not skinny and that hurt pretty good and I hit my elbow really bad and um, normally if I was younger something like that <laughs> would go away pretty fast but when you're older it's like you pay the consequences so uh, please, if anything to learn out of all this is kind of ask yourself, what if? What if this happened to me? What if, Am I prepared? Am I doing the steps? Am I being lazy? Am I skipping processes? Those are the kinds of things that will sneak up uh, behind you. And uh, and when you're not paying attention, wham, it gets you. And then uh, it could cost you a lot of money or you could get hurt pretty bad. So there you go. RV safety, RV tip of the day. Oh my gosh. Anyway, but World Series, Cubs win. I guess that's good. I'm not really a follower of either one, but uh, I was kind of rooting for the Cubs just because it's been so long for them. So good for them. We're happy for them. Well, as you know, uh, a lot of you folks know we brought the boat back down from Lake Powell and it's down here in Arizona with us. And uh, for this month, we'll be uh, just doing some little uh, cosmetic things to it. And uh, then uh, probably in December, we'll probably, or maybe around Thanksgiving, we'll put the boat in uh, either Lake Pleasant. And then uh, we're thinking about, we took a little uh, road trip up to, which is not that far away. It's only like 35 minutes from here, Lake Sororo, um, which is, uh, I think I said that right, uh, which is on the Bush Highway, which is uh, here in Arizona, uh, not that far from Fort McDowell. And uh, what a pretty little lake. We went there. Kind of um, parking isn't the best, and it's not laid out the best, but a uh, pretty lake. It's kind of down like in a valley-ish type of area. A uh, good-sized lake. You can fish in it. It's got uh, lots of uh, playtime. And remember, this time of year, if you're up northwest, you're going, what are you thinking? Of? But uh, down here, remember, we're still in the 80s, and um, uh, so... It's still people out there skiing and playing in the water, and it's a little cooler, and uh, uh, it's very comfortable uh, weather. And so this is Arizona's playtime for the next few months, for probably till um, March or April. So that's the benefits of being here. Um, you can get six to nine months of summer-like weather that you would normally have up in the northwest. So that is the benefit. Uh, we lived through the hot stuff where everybody's going, well, you're crazy for being down here. Yeah, we were, but that's over. So uh, we did put out a video about uh, about that. It'll come out uh, the same week. Yeah, same week as this uh, show. And uh, I'll show you kind of uh, what, uh, what it looks like there. The other thing that was really amazing is the Salt River, which is the river it goes into uh, Phoenix and uh, I swear that dam is letting out the least amount of water that it possibly can do because we thought well let's go down Salt River because a lot of people you know, inner tube and stuff down there well that's not the case now there's like hardly any water going through it's hardly even capable of calling it a river it's the first river I've ever seen that literally had algae and grass growing on top of it like how many rivers can possibly do that so i guess where we come from you know a river has water in it anyway but uh yeah i mean there's some water in it and if you watch the video you'll see it's pretty minimal and uh what was, what was really interesting is boy they sure got a lot of wild horses uh, on the uh, reservations and and uh this area and so yeah there's a lot of uh, horses uh kind of um throughout the river uh, uh watering themselves of course and uh farther down there's a um 
a water split type of thing where they split the water off for, I believe, irrigation and things like that. And uh, so it accumulates kind of again into like a kind of a lake area. And uh, it was really pretty. Uh, we found this kind of park where a lot of people will take their uh, uh, water boards, I guess they call them, or uh, um, and also uh, kayaks and things like that and enjoying the waters and stuff like that. And uh, it was kind of pretty. So we got some good pictures. So if you get a chance to check that video out, it's called Lake Sororo. And then... Um, Finding a new home for the boat is basically what the video is called. So it's an RV travel quest video, not one of our normal um, uh, episode shows. But yeah, check it out. Uh, there's another video coming out uh, where Cinder is getting her exam at the vet. And so for those of you who kind of like to watch Cinder, uh, you get to hear what the doctor says about her health and some of the suggestions for us and, and also chewing me out for giving her rides. So... <laughs> Anyway, that's kind of stuff going on, and uh, new videos coming out, and I hope you enjoy them. Please take the time to go to our YouTube channel and go check out some of those videos. And uh, if you haven't noticed, we changed to a color code. So outdoor travel channel uh, shows like that would be done in green. Uh, RV travel quest we do now with our um, thumbnails to be blue. Uh, RV travel buddy which is more rv tips and services will be done in red and um so that will kind of give you uh, a chance to quickly decide that if that's the kind of video you want to watch uh the green ones will have more of the boating stuff in it where the blue ones are more of me and sherry and 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 our personal stuff and so uh and some of them kind of blend sometimes you'll hear us talking about the boat and stuff like that even on rv travel quest um, RV travel buddies typically like you probably saw something about us cleaning the septic tank valve and getting the uh, rig wash you'll notice that that's done in red um, and, and so hopefully that new kind of code will kind of help you understand how the channel's working and then we have a new playlist coming out eventually for fishing I don't know what color we're going to use but it'll be a different color and uh, yeah, maybe I should use a salmon pink <laughs> <laughs> All right, I thought it was a good idea. Come on. Anyway, that's what's going on. Well, you guys always know that I always ask you about contacting us, and I am grateful because I actually got a nice little note from Frank M., is how he identifies himself, with a couple of subjects that wanted us to talk about. Uh, I'll try to... I won't try to do them all in this, uh, this show, but... Um, he asked about things like overanalyzing when buying an RV, uh, RV ratings. Yeah, <laughs> that's that would be nice. Um, uh, RV travel freedom. Uh, I talk about that a lot, and I think it's overused. This RV travel freedom thing. RV safety. He asked me. Uh, I had some stuff to talk about. Also, uh, three is a crowd having going on trips with like a set of friends and staying together um, whether that can get old or not uh, and the answer to that is yeah <laughs> definitely and uh, um, another is uh, choosing the right RV to recover your investment and if there's somebody out there that has an RV that was able to recover their investment uh, I'd love to hear that one but uh, let's let's get into the over analyzing, uh, and I <clears throat> probably because I'm pretty simplistic and visionary, and my wife is much more detail oriented than, than I am, and so uh, I pretty much uh, conclude quickly on you know basically what I would want for an RV, where Sherry would analyze it a lot more, and then. Um, I tend to try to spot or find out what the higher rating, like when it comes to RVs, uh, like Montana has the Mountaineer, which is a level down, and then uh, they've got another level below that, and I'm not sure what it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I tend to like stay with a higher level 
RV. So in our case with uh, Keystone, we went with the Montana. Uh, just knowing that they're built a little more rugged. Yes, they're a little more expensive. But it's the same thing with like uh, the Highland group. Uh, they Heartland group, sorry. Uh, they make uh, the uh, Landmark. And then the step below that is the Big Country. And then they have a Sprinter or something like that. And so they're kind of levels. And so you really have to ask yourself, if you're going to live in one, you better get a quality one. If it's for camping and uh, weekend warrior type stuff, then stepping down to the lower levels is probably just fine. Uh, RV, uh, Love Your RV Ray, they have a Cougar, which is a step down from, uh, I'm not sure what the next level is, sorry. Um, and his Cougar is serving him very well. But uh, he also puts a, put a lot of love and tears into it of, uh, of his own handiwork to make that a very reliable RV for him. So yeah, you just um, it's really easy to overanalyze and to a point that you won't buy anything. And so I guess what I have to say about that is is just figure out the what kind of RV you want in the first place, whether you want a motorhome, trailer, or, or, or fifth wheel, or Class C, or just maybe a tour van. Once you get past that part, then uh, talk. go to RV parks. And even if you don't have one, and walk around. RVers, there's no lack of RVers that want to BS. I can tell you that for sure. So just go to an RV park. Go to some of the popular ones. Um, not necessarily the in-town ones, because a lot of people use RVs there for work uh, in their jobs and contract work. But go to the bigger places like uh, um, a KOA or something like that. or And uh, go walk around, walk your dog, and uh, uh, talk to RVers that are outside and, and talk about what you're thinking about buying or doing. And there will be lots of feedback. Pretty soon you'll start seeing a pattern. Um, you'll see certain names like Montana will come up a lot. And there's other brands that will come up a lot. And uh, then you kind of like pretty soon you go, all right, these are the two main models or three main models I really like. And then you start just homing in on them. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, you can get to a point that you get so particular about each one that, you keep going in a circle, catch 22, you know, and uh, that can really be painful. It really comes down to no matter what you get, you're going to be working on it and you're going to be fixing it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't care how much money you spend, you will be fixing it. You will be repairing it. You will be doing extended warranties. You will break a tank, crack a, uh, a pipe. You will have problems with a slide. You may have a leak. Um, you may have a water leak in the slide. You may have electrical problems. You could have pressure problems. You can uh, have inverter problems. It just goes on and on. So, uh, uh, I mean, I love my Montana, but I've watched a couple of people with brand new Montanas um, having some issues. Um, and some of them are self-made and some of them are just issues. And so that's just how it is. So, yeah, you can overanalyze it to death, but you need to tell yourself, no matter what, you're going to be working on your RV. You will be fixing it. You will be taking it into the shop. You will prob I mean, probably, it always happens, you will be working on extended uh, warranty stuff. The ideal thing to do is, no matter what you buy, go camping in it right away. Stay nearby. Do not make big trips right after you buy it. Because it will probably end up in the shop uh, within a month um, from all the things that you'll find that need to be repaired or tweaked. So that's just how it is. So, yeah, uh, Sherry, on the other hand, would would take three to four more months to make the decision than if I am. And so we compromise between each other. She uh, put hers analytics against things where me, I'm compulsive, I guess, and so I'm ready to buy and get going on things. So, But I listen as close as I can with her, and she appreciates me keeping things timely, so it works really good. But, uh, yeah, if you don't have that um, and you're um, analytical, uh, you could lose sleep over this stuff. And it's and um, the big thing is if it's you're losing sleep over the quality, I have news for you. You will be working on 
a higher quality one as much as a lower quality uh, simple RV. That's just how it is. I've never seen anybody get into an RV and not have something go wrong that needs to be looked at and fixed. And I'm talking new even. Um, and let alone if you're going to buy something used, then that's a whole nother ball game. You will be fixing it and you may not have a warranty service. So there you go. Um, I hope that helps a little bit about overanalyzing the, that. I thought that was a pretty good subject matter. So I want to thank Frank for that, uh, that idea. Now, the next thing that people overanalyze is, do I want to be an art, uh, RV, <laughs> RV full-timer? Or um, do I just want to be uh, uh, extended or part-time RVer? And uh, I think I can actually comment on both of those. Uh, yes, Sherry and I have full-time. We're full-timing right now. How, I mean, how do you define full-timing? So there's the first thing is when you're going to go full-timing, are you going to really be full-timing where you're just going to travel? Or are you full-timing to live in an RV and still doing the nine to five stuff, uh, or one of you still has a job, and things like that. And that's our case, me and Sherry. Um, full timing, you know, uh, it has its ups and downs. And I'll tell you the truth, the real truth. Um, sometimes, uh, and a lot of times, I just like, you know what? I really miss having a house, I really miss my own property. I do miss uh, having a garage and uh, having. For me, I'd love to have a studio, and there's uh, times where I wish I had a shop and I can have some tools and work on something in my in my yard, and I wish I could park my boat and my RV in my yard and just use it when I want to. So are you going to have those same thoughts? And I, here I am, full-timing. I've done both, extended and full-timing. And so, you know, uh, Sherry, she kind of liked the comment. She says, I'm happy for the now. So she was always happy with either decision. I can be happy in an RV or I can be happy and living in a house again. So she's much more flexible than I am. I'm a visionary, so I'm always picturing things ahead of time. And it can be frustrating. But yeah, that's uh, analyzing whether you want to be full-timing. Now, the great part about extended is if you have a house, you get the snowbird effect. Or you can do what's called what me and Sherry did, where you can take your RV and put it in locations, and then when the weekends come, if you're working and stuff, uh, have a place to go that's very special to you. That's maybe uh, an hour to a five-hour drive away. But what's so nice about that is having an RV located in some favorite place or resort that you like, and you pay a monthly fee and leave it there. When it's plugged in, it's being ventilated well, um, it's it's safe and protected. It's not sitting in a storage sh uh, unit area. Um, and when the weekend comes, you can uh, just hop in the car, grab a few special things, a change of clothes, maybe some clothes, uh, some food that you want to have along, and uh, drive up to your RV, and it's all ready for you, and it's sitting in your favorite park, and you can enjoy the weekend, or maybe extended weekend, and just turn your RV into a vacation home. And then when you're tired of that, or maybe the weather changes where you can't do that anymore, move it to another location and do the same thing all year round. What a wonderful thing to do. What a great way to have a vacation home affordably. So yeah, um, and over analyzing that, it can easily happen too. So you got to ask yourself, even if you got into an RV full time, are you truly going to be happy? You know, you're going to miss, like folks like us, I've had a house for 25 years. And yes, I, I kind of miss that. And I did not get rid of all my stuff. And you heard me talk about minimalism last uh, episode. No, I we didn't get rid of We have all of our stuff for a home. And if we decide we want to go back to a home, I'm not going to have to rebuy everything. I have televisions and beds and and uh, tables and, and, and all kinds of doodads that a house requires. And uh, it wouldn't be hard for us to go back into a home. And, and, and there's times Sherry and I have talked about going back to uh, an area that maybe has a half acre or so that allows us to park our, our toys in the property and then use them as we please. So and what's nice about those, if I want to work on them, I can actually work on them. So 
Anyway, so for, uh, I know you're hearing my phone go off in the background a little bit. Is I'm reading, and I'm like Frank's note is on my f cell phone. It's easier to have here at the table, so I got it kind of close to the microphone. So that's my phone making all those little sounds. So I apologize for that. But at the same time, it's kind of a nice tool. I did try to turn it down a little bit. Um, but yeah, Frank, that great, great stuff. And there's uh, uh let me see if there's something else here that uh, uh, he mentioned I might bring up in this show. I think I want to talk about one more thing that he brought up here is RV freedom. Now, there's two kinds of RV freedom that I kind of analyze. One is uh, the RV freedom of living in an RV, what it gains you for freedom, you might say, away from a mortgage and a home. The other is uh, his was bringing up RV freedom as far as going where you want to go. And there's that's a great subject. And so Sherry and I have been thinking about if we went back to a house, we'd probably downsize our fifth wheel to more like a mm, Class C or something uh, smaller that uh, to me would be a little more rugged. And uh, uh, for example, Sherry and I dream of the time to go up to Alaska. Now, some of you guys watch some folks that go up to Alaska and uh, uh, Chris and G. Now, when they go up, they actually enjoy Alaska. They live Alaska. They go fishing. They're part of the community. They understand Alaska. And then there's others have gone up there and it's just, they kind of like don't really engulf Amer uh, Alaska. Sherry and I, we're salmon fishermen. We're s trout fishermen. We're outdoors people. We would want a rig that could handle some rough roads we would be going and i know i'm not interested in stealth camping uh it is nice while you're traveling up and stuff to not spend a lot of money on rv parks and stuff but um i i like the best of both worlds i like that rig that can handle stealth camping or not being hooked up you know especially going up to alaska but at the same time i like all the amenities so me, I would want to look into like uh, one of those super seas or something like that in the future that I know could handle. Uh, they're built like a Mack truck. <laughs> and in fact, they're put on Ford um, chassis that are pretty tough. And uh, knowing that they're going to get bounced around a lot. My fifth wheel, this Montana, if I took it to Alaska from what I've observed, would be too rough on it. And I just, I would not trust taking my... And I think I have a higher quality um, fifth wheel. I would not take this up to Alaska. So RV freedom um, yeah, is a give and take. I would think the little bit smaller of the units are a little more tough than these big monstrous things that like we got, the 36-foot Montana here. Uh, I, don't, I don't picture it, nor do I think it's very rugged enough to handle that kind of traveling. Uh, I would think you'd have to condense yourself a little bit more. And that's where Sherry and I was like, oh, if we decide to get a house again or something like that, downsize this puppy to something like that, or a shorter version of a Fleetwood motorhome. Um, Trailer-wise, oh, man, I, I just kind of worry about taking a trailer on rougher roads and stuff. I don't want to go just Alaska. I want the Yukon Territories things like that. I like fishing. I like those back lakes. I like the belly boat or float tube is what they call it. Um, I like fly fishing. I like to go to resorts. I like salmon fishing resorts, trout fishing resorts. Um, and uh, I I don't want to sit there filming the beauties of an RV park. Um, that's an RV park. I want to show you what's going on outside the RV park. And so that's how Sherry and I are, a little more uh, uh, adventurous. And so we, we would need an RV to handle that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's something that um, is a good subject is not only uh, are you deciding to go full-time or not full-time, the other thing is how versatile do you want your RV to be and how tough? Uh, are you just going to just roam around the United States and go RV park to RV park? You could pretty much get anything. But if you're going to go off the road a little more, uh, things like that, then you want to not only think about quality, but size and durability. And with all of this I'm talking about, I want to talk about, and I keep bringing it up, and I, I just because I worry about all these videos you're seeing, everybody's saying how we downsized, how to become a minimalist, how to be live small. 
And I'm telling you, you can do all this without worrying about that stuff. If you want to become a minimalist, great. It's less stress. And if you want to be more eco-friendly, that's wonderful. That's a good thing. That's all good. Um, but it's hard and it's a different lifestyle. And if you're like someone like me and Sherry, in our 50s, we've had the you know a, a great life. And there's certain things we like and amenities we like. And there's things I don't want to give up. And I don't have to. And you do not have to. And a lot of rigs are big enough. You can bring a lot of things that you really, really enjoy with you. And, uh, and including hobbies like sewing and quilting and things like that. Some woodworking things and uh, different hobbies that you enjoy can come along with you if you want to. Um, and if you need a little place to kind of work and stuff, you can get one of those toy haulers to turn that back room into an office or a little shop. That's, you know, it's very... You know, it all depends. Everybody's different. But uh, I, I want to once again urge you that this, uh, I, <laughs> I just, and all these channels are, and they're very popular. They're all talking about how we downsized. Well, great. Um, what they're really telling you is we can't afford to keep all this stuff. We need to minimize it. And so they're telling you to downsize, but it's only because their budgets are telling them they need to downsize if you don't have to worry about your budget so much don't downsize and don't minimum don't be a minimalist be you be you and um, but if you're trying to shoot for like some of the more eco-friendly um, um, composite um, uh, you know different kinds of toilets I can't say I can't remember the word um, things like that where you don't want to hurt the economy so much that is certainly a wonderful thing to do and uh, um, simplifying your life, nothing wrong with that. Remember I've talked about having stuff requires stress because the more you own, the more you have to worry about, the more you're responsible for it, the more responsibility you have, the more stress. If you're trying to get rid of that, then yeah, becoming a minimalist or at least reducing your responsibilities of ownership, that's a good thing. But yeah, don't, don't think you have to uh, downsize and don't think you have to be a minimalist to be an RVer. For goodness sakes, I know it sounds interesting and I know it sounds like a great thing, but you know, I still have to say you worked hard for your stuff. Keep it. Give it to the grandkids. Let them worry about it. <laughs> so, all right, let's move on. So it's definitely time for me to identify our sponsor which is Good Music Radio, which is an internet radio station. And there's a link in our description below to how to get to it. Once again, it's like turning your, <laughs> your cell phone into a little transistor radio. Yep, I remember my first transistor radio. It was a Donnie Marie transistor radio. That's a, That was pretty cool back then. But no, seriously, uh, uh, if you get a chance, if you really like just good music, and especially if you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, you will definitely relate to this channel. And uh, it's modern too, so it's it's good for everybody. But uh, basically, it's greatest hits of almost all the genres. <laughs> Gender. <laughs> anyway, so it has a uh, country. It has easy listening. Lots of classic rock. Uh, lots of pop music. Uh, and so it's a channel with everything instead of just saying we're going to be a greatest hits country or greatest hit jazz or whatever. Uh, it's just good tunes all the time and very little talk. And so when you get a chance, it's very easy to uh, download a free app. You can just go to goodmusicradio.com. There's a link there. It says uh, free uh, download music app. And you download that little puppy, and it gives you a little player. And you just press it, and it goes right to our channel. And there you go. Put your head, uh, headphones on if you like. Go for a walk. Um, I put it in our pocket, and Sherry and I will listen to it at the same time when we go for walks around the Fountain Hills, things like that. So when you get a chance, goodmusicradio.com. Go check it out. Something different. Um, You'll love it, and you can tie it into your uh, your car radio. You can uh, play it on your cell phone. You play it off your computer. It's just 
you're working in the shop, it's great music all the time. So check it out. I uh, also wanted to uh, remind folks that if you're interested in some things you'd like us to talk about, like Frank did, um, and you'd like to just shoot us notes of what you like about the show, um, ideas, if you'd like to be on our show, um, we can definitely consider you. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid to ask. Uh, we just can't watch all the shows out there. And I still discover shows that have actually been on for a long time, and I didn't, even, I've didn't, never linked up with them before. And uh, so it's real hard for me to catch all the new folks out there. And if you're looking for a little bit of a break and a chance to get recognized and a shout-out, um, we'll help you out if it's uh, uh, applicable to our show. And not to mention uh, on Good um, Good Music Radio, uh, that's open for all. And if you're interested and you have a business that you'd like to uh, maybe create a commercial for, uh, we'll work with you and see what we can do. We can do a little bartering or trading, and it helps us and it helps you, and it's all good. So, yeah, got to talk about that stuff. All right, moving on. Got one more little thing I was going to talk about, and uh, it has to do with watching some channels. And there's really some great channels out there. And and one thing you can guarantee with young folks is times are going, things are going to change. Uh, it's just it's just how it is. That's life. You can be plugging along, just doing a little thing, and got a great following, and all of a sudden, just life changes and things happen. And uh, one of the ones I was watching, and I'm not going to say the name of the channel, but um, it was interesting to observe uh, burnout. And so what people don't realize is if you're going to get into this stuff uh, and, and YouTube and, stuff, and and your channels explode and go nuts, you start getting overwhelmed with comments and feedback. And, and then I've heard so many times people saying, well, you're my family. <laughs> you're... I make these videos for my family and and uh, what they forget is all you have to do is one little thing funny or unethical or something like that and you'll find out real quick those people are not your friends and uh, so my warning is is uh, you can get you know, if you're gonna get into this whether it's a podcast or whether it's a, a YouTube channel and a blog and stuff like that it can take your life over to a point where you're almost running your life to try to entertain your fans. And uh, yes, it's very nice to have fans and we really appreciate it and we like it too. But we also realize that we're entertainment. It's an entertainment show. They all are. Even if we're doing RV tips and then and, uh, um, DIY kind of shows and stuff like that, we're still... Um, uh, entertainment channels and stuff and most of us only try to make 10 minute videos uh, there's a whole you know in 24 hours 10 minutes is a very small fraction of our lives and so um, yeah I I just want to kind of make sure that uh, folks that see it in our podcast you don't see our numbers like you do on YouTube's and stuff but our channel's grown uh, our podcast has grown immensely and we appreciate that and we love it um, and there'll be a time where things will change where we might not be able to do the show anymore. That's just life. And to just to give you an idea to do a show like this, you got to do every week and be on time. And you, and you guys, uh, you know, we tell you we have a show coming out on Mondays, and you expect it to be there on Monday. And so, uh, yeah, I've got to always plan to have a show ready every Monday, and that's just how it is. And I enjoy that. And and uh, that's great, and I do it for my listeners. And uh, but the thing is, I want to warn folks that want to do this: is your listeners are not your family, they're not your children, they're not your life. And so, when you're making your day-to-day -day decisions or uh, traveling, and it could, you know, in, in a lot of channels and stuff, are not just traveling. Um, you got to make your decisions and you, and live your life based on you and your partner and your family and kids and and your situations and stuff. And really, you can't... I've seen some folks just hold on way too long. And it was really interesting to watch one channel the other day that are young millennials and when uh, they got 
a child on the way and they're going to hang it up and in uh you know this lifestyle of having a child in an RV that they were in they were more like a van um it changed their life and they're changing their lives with it and they're probably going to their fans will probably say oh well no you could still van life and stuff and no you can't let that drive your life so i'm talking to the people that are thinking about doing this or are doing it now that you really need to shake your head or shake each other by the shoulder and say, come out of it. We have our own lives to live. Do we always want to be a traveling or living in a van or living in a, a little RV and traveling all over? And, and do we, if I have kids with us, do we want to give them stability? And do we want them to stay at the same public schools or private school or whatever? You've got to make those decisions that's best for yours. And so you may have to sacrifice your audience or sacrifice your channel and maybe go into a different kind of subject too. So I, I see a lot of that. And I see people talking to the channels like, you're my friends and you're my, um, you know, what do you want me to do? And, and this is our life. And then and, and being uh, emotional and things like that can uh, uh, it was, it's worrisome because are they trying to please their audience and their inner, uh, or do, have they forgotten the fact that this is entertainment and, and uh, uh, you really got to do what's best for you and make your decisions based on you and your, your spouse or your partner. And so uh, folks out there that are doing this have shows or hearing our shows and and we do it our way and you do it your ways and stuff. But the big thing is make sure you're doing it for you and make sure that you're living your life based on you and your spouse and your partner and family and not your audience. Because your audience are, uh, uh, it's, they know it's an entertainment show and when it's not entertainment anymore, they'll go to another entertainment. Uh, not that they're being... Uh, that's just nature, and I do it too. It's like I watch a show for a while, and then I kind of lose interest. I may actually go away for a while or permanently go away because it's just not interested in anymore. And it's just how it is. And not that I hate the people or not that I uh, don't appreciate their show. I'm just kind of tired of it. It's not entertaining to me anymore. And that's just uh, how it goes. So these young folks are doing these channels and they, uh, you see the emotion and the trying to connect with their audience, which is great and stuff. But I also notice that they're trying to make lifestyle decisions based on what their audience is telling them. And uh, I just kind of fear if that's healthy or not. So anyway, something to consider when you're going to start a channel like this. Uh, please always tell yourself, I'm doing this for entertainment and to help others. And uh, if you just keep that in mind, you'll have a great relationship of doing this and your, you know, doing what you like to do and a good relationship with your audience, knowing that they are watching your show because of the entertainment. Well, our hour is about up, and uh, we're getting to the end of the show. I uh, hope this has been a, a, a kind of enlightening show to you about safety and the things that can happen in an RV. Uh, vigilance is always the big thing, being uh, kind of aware of this stuff. And hopefully shows like this, it kind of tells you the things to look out for. I am very grateful to some of the feedback we got from the last shows. And we're able to talk about some of those subjects on this show. We'll try to do the same thing on the next show. We urge you to contact us. Tell us how we're doing. Um, love to hear your stories. And uh, uh, remember, you can just go to RV Talk Radio. Go to the contact page. It's private. You can go to Facebook at RV Talk Radio. Um, or uh, RV Travel Buddy, either one. And say, uh, talk about things you'd like us to do podcasts on or uh, videos no problem so me and Sherry are very grateful to have you uh, listening to us we ask you if you would uh, like our videos when you see our videos to share our podcast to share our videos too it helps us very much and we uh, uh, are just darn right grateful for it so we want to ask everybody to be safe be vigilant and be an RVer have a good day now see you next week Bye now. Thank you for watching our videos. 
please take the time to subscribe to our videos or become a patron supporter. As a patron supporter, Robin Sherry will give you exclusive information of behind the scenes stories. There is free gifts and explanations of how we make our videos provided exclusively to our patrons. Thank you for supporting us.